Memorial Day weekend marks the unofficial start of grilling season. So our guest today has got some tips for taking your cookout from good to worst. Ah, W U R S T. Like that, like, like, like bratwurst. bratwurst. Yeah, of course we're talking about the critically acclaimed <laughs> beef hot dogs and also bratwurst. Joining us today is culinary director and worst maker from Dog House, Adam Gertler. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all these treats you brought us. Hello. Oh, good morning. How, how does everything look? It looks delicious. It smells fantastic. Uh, you say a great cookout starts with your grill. So what do we need to know about yes. that? Well, I think one of the most important things that gets overlooked is the importance of a lubricated grill. And by way of demonstration, I just want to show you here. So, so I have my grill and I think it's really important that you dedicate one towel, one kitchen towel. And this way, this is just an oil rag, so you can just keep reusing it, and it's better than like using paper towels and then just throwing them away. So you just ah. kind of keep this by the grill. What's the and lubricant? That is just a neutral oil, like a canola oil, something like that. You can see how beautiful that looks. And I'm just trying to say, like, so that is uh, chicken on a grill that has not been lubricated. Oh, can no. I and then say over here, we can just see. I have never that seen that around. with the towel like that. That's a that's smart idea. Like, yeah, no, no, this is, I mean, in restaurants, they'll have these, you know, you keep it around. And that's just, I mean, it, that is so important because if your food uh, sticks, you're not going to get those pretty grill marks. Right. Good luck trying to do like a piece of salmon or something without a really well lubricated grill is so important. And then you just do, you just toss the, the towel after, right? Because you can't really wash that. Uh, I, you know, I actually keep it for quite a while. I keep it by the grill. You could even keep it, you know, like with the oil on it. And like that is your oil rag, you know, and you can keep it for that purpose. That's brilliant. Uh, obviously, it's important to like clean the grill grates too. Uh, after you cook, when everything's still hot, that's the time to clean your grill. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have built up stuff from your previous uh, grilling sessions. All on. right, move that chicken out of the way. Can we put some dogs on there? Apparently, <laughs> a, good, a good absolutely. dog comes Let's... down to heat. That thing's really on Okay, there. so this is a really important thing I wanted to emphasize. Okay, so medium heat. Okay, so don't like rage your hot dogs and sausages. You see how nice and beautiful and plump these are? Because they've been cooking for several minutes. Um, and now I wanted to show you by way of comparison. See how this guy gets wrinkled like that? See how that's all kind of wrinkled? Have you ever had a wrinkly dog situation before? Okay, the way you can avoid that is once your 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 dogs, your brats are done, if you're serving a lot of people and you have guests and you want to keep them plump, these were cooked over an hour ago and look how perfect they are. If you keep them submerged in a liquid, I'm using a, a light beer here, but you could use water uh, or anything you like, really. Oh, beer. Um, and that, like that. Um, yeah, that submerging is going to keep your dogs and sausages ready to go at all times. Again, super important. So they're beautiful and not wrinkled like that. You want them to be plump and juicy. I'm the worst mocker. I like to make worse, and I care about how my worst are served. <laughs> okay. Okay. So can you talk about your top tool for elevating your grill? Okay, so here's another thing. So of course we love our grill grates, right? Those are great, but it is nice to have something like this. Look at this right here. This is a flat top, yeah. cast iron, and you could add that to your grill. And these come in all different sizes. You can see over here, I have like a big fancy one. Right. If you've ever tried to grill onions or bacon or certain vegetables and they fall through the grates, if you have a flat top, it's a great place to land. And by way of yet oh. another demonstration, I wanted to show you what can happen sometimes to burgers, okay? So like the fat content in a burger like that is going to cause a fair amount of flare up. Right. But, and then you know, smash burgers are all the rage right now, right. so look at this. So we take a burger basically as a ball. Uh -huh. We take a burger press, which you could purchase anywhere. Like if you go online, they have these all over the place. Is that parchment pa paper on top of it? Uh, this, is, um, this is a parchment paper, uh -huh. right? So then we just come in and we season our burger. Oh. And this is going to give it a beautiful crust. Now, this looks okay right now, but as soon as that fat starts to um, loosen up, you can see what's happening there. Right. Now, and then you, you also, might think that's a good thing. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and you also lose a lot of the juice going through the right. grill, right? right? Like you want to hold on to that for a little bit. Yeah, you see like right over here, it's actually cooking in yeah. all that fat. And that's going to give it an incredible, um, you know, a beautiful uh, Maillard reaction in color. Here, when that flare up happens, it creates a sooty, um, you know, not great flavor. It might look like too fun much. for like an Instagram shot or something right. like that, but no, you want to cook on coal. You don't want to cook on flame. 
Adam, these Does are such sense? good tips. These are great tips. I feel like you're giving us all your secrets. Thank you. Okay, That's wait, what you asked me for. I know, right? Okay, so here's the other thing. You have another t tip about keeping your cookout guests surprised. What's that about? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, like, keep it fun, right? Like, so, like, tips like this are great to get all your protein ready to go, right? But you don't want to build everything. You want to just kind of make a nice buffet and let your guests have fun. So it's important to have all your condiments and accoutrement all set up for everybody. So you can kind of make nice little squeeze bottles of different kind of mustards, make different aiolis. Um, you know, things like uh, coleslaw is a great topping. Uh, we also like to mix up the buns. You know, at Doghouse, we're known for doing uh, King's Hawaiian bread. So like, instead of doing like a typical hot dog bun, right? Like we take these incredible um, dinner rolls that are made right here in Southern California. Uh, and then we'll cut them in a way so that it's almost like a New England style, New England style hot dog bun, right? And then you could just like butter the top Ooh. and then you could just put it on, on your flat top, right? I have a big fancy flat top right here that works as well. And then just to show you that burger over here, let's take a look at how that's doing. Oh, look yeah. at that. Oh, See that beautiful yeah. mark right that's there? so much better. Oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. oh, I like the grill lines too, though. And right? then, you know, and then, yeah, no, no, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm just telling you, like, that fire, once you do a few burgers, like, if you had several burgers, it's going to create all this flame, and then it, it can create a problem for you. So it's like, maybe you do this burger for show, and then this is the one that you actually serve people. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. Uh, you have a very unique title. So what, what training is required to be called a worst maker? <laughs> well, the training comes from trying to make hot dogs and sausages and suffering through many batches of very poor sausages <laughs> that are grainy, gritty, fall apart, just awful. Until you do enough reading and enough experimenting, and you put your friends and family through enough bad sausages to get to the point where it starts to get good. Uh, and so I've been doing it for about, I don't know, 12 years or so making sausage. And, um, you know, about five years into it, I hooked up with the guys that started Doghouse. And then we made all the hot dogs and sausages proprietary. So if you go to any one of our doghouse locations, you get our very unique hot dogs and sausages. You can see we have our bratwurst, our Polish, yeah. our beef dogs. Adam, um, you it, have been so yeah. much fun. We are so out of time. Um, but oh, you, thank you so cool. much. Listen, Mark is going to take a bite of something here. Of, of, of uh, while we give you some more information on the screen. What do you want him to take a bite of? The impossible? What? What do you want? Oh, no, 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 no. We're, okay, going, we're going beef. Uh, why don't you take a bite of that Das Brat? That's a favorite of mine. The Brat, which one? The oh. Bratwurst? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Thank Classic. you so much. So Again, you can visit doghouse.com uh, or doghouse, H A U S dot com. Dig in. Go, boy. Ready? Go, buddy. Go, buddy. Here. here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, you're not putting the whole thing in your mouth, are you? Oh, wow, he is. Yeah, well, one bite at a time, please. There you go. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Yummy? Whoa. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good weekend.